Um, I'll try and uh, skip the khutbah so I can get, take more time. Um, there are many aspects of uh, can, uh, need to make time. many aspects of the Holy Quran that we can talk about. I very quickly want to talk about um, just one dimension of the Holy Quran and probably develop onto that in the next 15 minutes. Every language has two parts. And in Arabic we call it Nazm and Nasr. Nazm is basically poems and Nasr is basically prose. Poems and prose. But the Arabic language has three things. It has the poetry, Nazm. It has the Nasr, which is the prose. And it also has the Holy Quran which is beyond the two. Earlier on when you were hearing uh, two great scholars, um, Dr. Bahmanpur and Dr. Shumali, who went into explaining the importance of the Holy Quran and the different dimensions. I would like to thank um, Dr. Jahangir and all the other members of MSN for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all. How can you attract the younger audience to to pay more attention to the Holy Quran, you cannot transfer something to the children and the younger audience if you do not have it in you. Okay, something you don't possess, you cannot give. According to philosophy, something you don't possess, you cannot give. Okay. Now there is a law in philosophy. Um, you know, something you don't possess, you cannot give. So you first need to understand that all of you must give the importance to the Holy Quran to be able to transfer that importance to the children or to the younger audience. Secondly, they will never understand the importance of the Holy Quran if they cannot relate to the Holy Quran. Being too tall can sometimes have problems. Okay, sorry. Now, if they cannot relate to the Holy Quran, they will not associate. Unfortunately, look at the cartoons these days. The children live to be the cartoons. They want to adapt the character of the cartoon. I want the same shoes, I want the same hat, I want the same school bag, everything. Okay? You are in competition with the greatest of the shaitani powers. Who is in competition? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the scholars I don't want to mention his name in case you don't get the right impression, if I cannot transfer the right impression. You know, you have to give a deposit if you fight an election. Yes? That if you don't get, for example, let's say 500 votes, then your deposit is taken from you. So if I wanted to fight the election and there are 100,000 votes, I must get at least 500 votes to have my deposit returned to me. Let's say 5,000 pounds of deposit. This scholar said that if today Shaitan went to elections with God, Allah would lose his deposit. Yes? I didn't want to mention his name so you get the wrong impression. No, I don't want to give the wrong impression. But that's how powerful the media is today. From very early childhood, when the children do not even know how to speak, they already have associations and relations. In the competition, we need to give the children, they must feel an association with the Holy Quran, and they must feel that we have a relationship with the Holy Quran. Okay? Now, you know, for example, how sometimes a child says, I want my mother now. Meaning they know that the others cannot help. Even the father cannot help. It is the mother's job now. She needs to come in and give the comfort to that toddler. Yes? That's how close a person should feel. How can do they, do they do that? I have a theory that I've picked up from some of the other faiths. I don't want to mention too much into that. So, uh, 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 um, 
a terminology that inshallah you'll all note down remember and look into later on you can google it you can i don't want to mention even that but you can do your own research on it something which is called scriptural reasoning scriptural reasoning okay you get the script the size of surah al-fatiha choose parts of the holy quran especially stories especially stories from the prophet sallallahu and other stories okay that have lessons you choose a small passage you write it in arabic and you also write the english and you make them read the arabic and then you make them read the english and they can associate with the english at least the age of seven eight minimum i think i would personally say nine onwards before that the children are not strong enough to do any of that okay nine onwards especially unfortunately some of the state schools make the children so dumb that they cannot even at the age of nine um, uh, analyze a text okay the schools in some of the parts of some parts of the uk are function are basically trained to keep the children at a much lower level some schools are quite advanced okay now at the age of nine you have a small paragraph they read for example the words and then you t give them the english and you say okay this word is this in arabic so they can understand the the translation and then you say what do you learn what are the lessons who does it the teacher just sits down in a circle so they all sit down let's say not too big a group five to ten maximum ten okay five to ten students sit down around in a in on the floor or in a circle on chairs and the teacher sits down and says okay i'll read uh, sometimes it is good to have volunteers read the arabic and then volunteers read the English and then start it off and say, okay, these, these are the words. What do you understand from these words? And let the children say what they understand. You will be surprised at times what they come up with. And if they make mistakes, say, well, where does it say in the text what you are saying? Okay, this is called textual reasoning. Okay, textual reasoning. Now, make the children associate. Let me just quickly say a few I can't. Okay. Someone will inshallah indicate when my time is over. You, you'll tell me, please. She's doing it. <laughs> because I was sitting on the other right and I couldn't see her do that. No, it's okay. Now, there are so many ahadiths. Look at the verses of the Holy Quran. I did not choose uh, a long sermon, but look at the verses. In Surah Furqan, Surah number 25, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Holy Prophet on the Day of Judgment will complain in the Qawmit Taqadu Hadha Al-Qur'ana Mahjura. They abandoned the Holy Quran. God forbid. Okay. Look at the verses when Atul Jawadi Amli goes into the tafsir of this verse from Surah Baqarah. Shahr Ramadan Alladhi Unzila Fihil Quran. He says the best month of the year is the month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What is the blessing? You have more prayers? No. You fast in this month? No. You give homes or zakat, at the end of it you have zakat al-fitrah? No. Alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The greatest message of the month of Ramadan is that Allah revealed the Holy Qur'an in it. How many of us actually look at the Holy Qur'an and pay attention to the words that we're reading? How many of us on regular basis at least read a page and, and pay attention to it? Until we ourselves give the importance to the Holy Qur'an, we'll not be able to transfer that love and respect to the Holy Qur'an. Once I heard Atullah Misbah Yazdi say that Allah Mataba Tabai used to not get up from the ground when he had the Quran in front of him. You know, he would usually have a, rahal, you know, a, a, a wooden piece that carries the Holy Quran. He would not stand up. He would pick up the Holy Quran and stand up. That I do not wish to be higher than the Holy Quran and standing up. That's when you become Allama Taba Tabai. That's when you become the greatest Mufassir of the Holy Quran when you have so much respect. You know these marajay, they don't just adapt to mustahabbat when they become a marja taqlid, now I have to do mustahabbat. Now I have to do because I'm a marja. No, they were doing all of those things and Allah gave them the blessing to become what they became. When you adapt all of those respects, mustahabbat, obligations and so much love and passion, that's when you become so great. Not that when I become great, I'll try and do those things. You only become great because you do those things. And even greatness does not mean fame, money, wealth. No, these are not greatness. Even if you never become famous, 
you may still have that self-respect because you do all of those things okay now how many of us have that you know the greatest problem the teachers have one of the lectures by Atala Jawadi Hamli recently in Qom he gave for ulama people uh, you know the students went people like me went and said Aga can you admonish us can you tell us off so he said you know your greatest problem he didn't say to me directly <laughs> he said to all the people that were present he said our greatest problem is not that we don't know it's not El our greatest problem is Amal the people who become religious they unfortunately people like me and you because we're all religious when we're teaching unfortunately the biggest problem that we sometimes build without realizing I'm exempted this rule applies to the others I'm a teacher it doesn't apply to me I'm mudarris akhlaq I teach akhlaq so I don't need it I'm exempted I teach others about the respect of the Holy Quran so I'm exempted I don't need it hang on you need it more than anyone else Imam Ali Islam says very beautiful saying in Nahjo Balagha Man, whoever intends Man Arad, whoever intends to have, you know to purify the souls of other people nafsi. he must start from himself he must start from herself and himself whoever intends to purify others he must start purifying themselves first and unfortunately we exempt ourselves yes no there are no exceptions the Holy Prophet did not say okay 17 rakat wajib no he did he said Allah made 51 rakat wajib on me and you're only one third of what obligations I have being so pure but yet so many obligations so don't make yourself exempted from what you are telling the students okay in English there is a proverb do as I say not as I do <laughs> do as I say not as I do now unfortunately we do have a similar hadith from the Holy Prophet and not unfortunately meaning it is wrong but it's in a and it's a, a criticizing the people of the last of the times he praises the people in the last of the time Akhru Zaman but this is a criticism he says many of the community leaders in the end of the time in Akhru Zaman just take our hadith and teachings from them don't look at their character otherwise you will leave us as well okay what happens is that we exempt ourselves do not make yourself an exception so everything that I say to anyone is first for myself and then for the others the other thing very quickly I want to say one of my teachers once said to us he said why are you reading I was reading a book very young why are you reading this book a um, friend of mine he was also reading and he quickly before I could say anything he said so we can teach others he said no that's the wrong intention never make that intention you're reading for your own knowledge and to change yourself if you happen to ever get a chance to share what you know with others and change them as well then it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but everything you learn is for yourself okay so everything okay everything for yourself I've got four minutes and inshallah I'll finish within my four minutes everything you learn is for yourself now unfortunately what we do is we become teachers and if you realize time flies Al Furaso ka Sahab Imam Ali Islam. Free time. Furas is the plural of Fursa. Free time. Your free time is like a cloud. It comes without informing you, passes by very quickly. Yes? We have been, some of us have been teaching for five years, ten years, fifteen, twenty years. But have we in those five to ten years ever read the Holy Quran from the beginning to the end with the intention of understanding it and with small commentary? How many of us? Okay. <laughs> it is important that at least we do one daughter of the Holy Quran, one from the beginning to the end, from the Ba'af Bismillah Rahim to the Sinai Nas from the beginning to the end. In all the Hawza and Qom and Najaf, they would do a short tafsir, tafsir is Safi by Fayyad Kashani, from the beginning to the end. So all of Quran, some words, and a short tafsir. If you cannot do Al Mizan, you can't do much Malbayan, then I do at least some, you know, like. In, in English, Mir Ahmad Ali or someone, I don't know. So, you know, you have 20, 30 volume sets of tafsir if you don't have time. Over 20 years, we don't plan. So, there should be 
a plan for you that I'm going to be teaching that many weeks and I need to prepare for all of these weeks and I need to change myself and give importance to the Holy Quran. Now, social media tonight, I have a lecture somewhere, addiction to social media. Now, I was reading on it. Social media is so addictive that you every now and then, I myself am a victim of that. You take out your phone and you say, well, you know, I've got 200 messages already now. I, I just delete 180 of those, get a chance to read 20, and the rest I just, without reading, delete. Some I don't even read, I don't even open. But you look every five minutes, you look at it, you look at your phone, you, messages and everything. Guess if that, you know, that much time you spent on the Holy Quran every day. Yes? It is quite difficult for us to, to keep teaching the children and we don't adapt to those teachings ourselves. In the last few minutes, I want to very quickly say, there were many stories in mind that we could uh, very quickly relate, yes? The best uslub and the method of the Holy Quran is giving stories. A child associates with the story and an older person also. Every age likes to hear the most beautiful stories. Allah SWT very quickly mentions a story and then he says a lesson. If you pick up the stories of the Holy Quran and sit down with the children, read with them, there are lessons. What have you learned from it? And then also read someone like tafsir e noor of, uh, you know, Sheikh Mohsin Qarati, um, Parables of the Holy Quran. There are many other examples who analyze very quickly stories of the Holy Quran. Yes, pick out the Qasas of Quran, one paragraph and very quickly analyze. What are the lessons to be learned? Sheikh Mohsin Qarati just quickly mentions on one page, these are all the lessons that I have learned from this story. These are all the lessons that I've learned from these ayat. Very short, easy, simple and attractive. It is very attractive. Okay, the children need to feel a relation with the Holy Quran and attraction to the Holy Quran and they should be adapting those teachings in their life. When they read, they can associate and practice those things. Okay, um, look at the methods that the Jews use for example on Saturday schools and the Christians on Sunday schools and try and bring some of those things. Um, you know Sheikh Mohsin Qarati used to draw everything on the board and say these are the things. I was looking at uh, the efforts of sister, the two sisters, their sister and sister Shahwa, uh, you know at the back, believe me you, it is extremely attractive. Atullah um, B. Azar, B. Azar Shirazi in, in, uh, in Iran is also doing something similar. So he takes out pictures, this and that, you know, the Holy Quran mentions something, bring a picture and says analyze, look at the verse, look at the pictures. Younger children associate better with sight, visual, it has to be visual, it has to be visual, if it is not visual, they cannot understand just words because they, they speak very late, they don't understand, they don't comprehend. Even big words are more complicated. Quran is all big words. You need to have simple translations. Okay? Thank you very much for bearing with me for such a long time.